We have some interesting names in this squad list and some new invites, which has packed a lot of reactions from every single Blacksters fan. All right, joining us um, to weigh this conversation, see how we feel the pulse of um, all Ghanaians, will be Ghana football commentator, Jerome Autry. Thank you so much, Jerome, for joining me today on the show. Thank you and good evening. Good evening to you. All right, let's go straight. The list has been provided, 55 men. Um, Why Nigeria provided 40, having only three domestic league players, that's the MPFL players. Ghana had to go an extra north. They go, got um, 11 players from the Ghana Premier League with Mediama SC having five. We've got Ashante one and um, um, Dreams FC. Uh, they've got two. Uh, it's a great one. But um, at the publication of this list, what was your first reaction, Jerome? Well, I was happy to see it because it, it's building up to the Af Afcon fever. We are getting closer and closer to the African Cup of Nations. And developments like this one gives you a hint that we are closer and closer by the day. So I was happy seeing it. But then going through the list also gives a different feeling. And I'm sure uh, as we go into the conversation, we can tackle those issues. All right, um, great one there. But um, I was surprised not to see the likes of, um, I could see Alfred Duncan. I could not see that name, Jeffrey Silop. They are missing in that list, even with their spectacular performance. Does this cast as passion on the list? Well, to some extent it does. But uh, in the case of Jeffrey, I'm not too surprised because following from the World Cup and the sort of controversy that surrounded whether or not he was going to be called and the sort of explanation that the former coach gave, I, I think he's out of the question completely. Mm. I, I don't believe he's ever going to be called, especially under this administration. Maybe mm. something will change. I am not sure. But in his case, I, I think it's a closed chapter. Mm. For the others, that is why some questions are being asked. In fact, there are some colleagues who have rubbished uh, the 55 man squad that has been put out there. Some of them believe that it is not fully representative of uh, the scouting work that should have been done by the coaches. But I mean, the back stops with them. They have decided and we'll have to wait uh, and see the final squad, which is going to be almost half of this that has been put out. I mean, half of this squad will be put out and we'll get to know who stays and who doesn't stay. I am, as someone who has followed our local football for a long time, okay. I am impressed mm. to have seen 11 players coming from the Ghana Premier League. And I've seen some of our colleagues, I mean, Nigerian journalists drawing some comparisons. In fact, in one of your intro, in your intro, <laughs> I, I heard you say that Nigeria had three spaces for uh, uh, local players in the same number, and Ghana has had 11. Mm -hmm. There are colleagues I've also seen from Nigeria on Twitter or on, on X who are making the same argument. Mm -hmm. the, the interesting thing, if I must share with my, my Nigerian friends, is that, I mean, I am not so optimistic that we will have a big number of local players in the final squad. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I am limiting my expectations so that if it doesn't happen, I don't become too disappointed. I would be surprised if we have more than two of the local players. I mean, the 11 that has been named in the 55. I would be very surprised if we have more than two of them making it to the final squad. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a good signal. I mean, I posted on my handle this afternoon that it's a good sign for local players if of the 55 players that have been called, you have nearly one-fifth or a little over one-fifth mm. making up to the squad, then that is good enough. But let's see how many of them can make the final 26 or is it 27 that will go to AFCON. 27 that will go to AFCON. There's an increase there from 23 to 27. But I would like to know the um, you know, obvious misses we did see in the 55-man uh, provisional list. Does this really show individual interest 
superseding the national interest because a lot have come with that reaction on social media. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, in Ghana's case, that argument is always going to come up. Okay. But I have to say that I would want to wait to see the finance part because, you see, the, the 55, to be honest with you, doesn't make sense to me. I am mm. opposed to this notion of calling 55 players and whittling it down to the, to the final number of 27, mm. or in the previous case, 23. I, I, it doesn't make sense to me because, you see, mm. even if you want to listen to all the arguments that have been as advanced for the, for the 55, mm. those same arguments can be made for the 23 or for the 27 in this case. If you name your 27 by January 3rd, 2024, and something happens, you are still going to play the tournament. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any difference. And I have said, in fact, I have suggested in some of my write-ups that uh, in our situation, in, in, in the kind of system that I have been used to, this provisional squad gives a lot of room for, for, for the dubiousness that we see mm. in player selection. And so I'm not surprised people are making uh, uh, that argument or I'm not even surprised you are asking that question because okay. it, it, it is because of the way we've done things over and over and over, which doesn't inspire a lot of confidence in the system. Mm. Only recently I was asking a few colleagues that how many times do we hear of the English national team squad or the Brazilian national team squad, or the French national team squad, being named the way we do. They also go to continental tournaments. They also play in the in the Euros. They play in the World Cup. Do they subject themselves to this kind of uh, a situation that uh, we are subjecting ourselves to? Mm. I do not understand the basis of this. In fact, some colleagues have tried to educate me on why there must be a provisional squad. But I'm saying that in the long run, it creates room for corruption and 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 it doesn't really change anything the mm. coaches at heart know who they are going to draw from this squad and i do not know why calf would want to take us on this journey and then sometime later in about two weeks time you would come back with a squad which you they they, they already have i mean mm. chris Hinton okay. by now has, has an idea of who he's taking to ivory coast mm. and why would we subject ourselves to this charade of naming 55 players and then later dropping almost half of them. Well, that's the situation we have on our hands. And okay. like I said, some of us will want to wait and see the final squad. I think uh, the, the major points I would want to make will come when the final squad is okay. out there for us to see. Okay, we will await the final squad. Uh, CAF is given 3rd of January 2023 for the final 27 or 23, to you please, squad from all national teams participate in national themes. Um, time to wrap, friend Jerome. I would have gone on and on, but I'm very sure we'll bring you back when the final squad has been released. Thank you so much. We have been talking to Ghana football commentator Jerome Autry. Thank you so much for joining us on Game On. Thank you for the opportunity.